All right, CNT 120, Chapter 6. We're now in the section on our frames, 8 to 11 frames. Uh, because of the extra overhead that wireless networks use, there is a couple extra frame fields um, and a couple extra frame types that we need to look at. So the frame type groups, we have management frames, control, and data. Uh, the management frames are... Uh, ones that we have with associating to an access point, the probes and the beacons and so forth. The control are things like the uh, the acknowledgements and the request to send clear to send frames. And then the actual data is the actual sending of the data from, you know, my laptop to into the network or an email or that sort of thing. So as I look at uh, 802.11 frame versus 802.3 Ethernet frame, this is the one Ethernet frame. Oops, get back here. Um, this right here we should remember from previous. This was our Ethernet frame and our header fields. Preamble, destination address, source address type, data, and the frame check sequence or the trailer back there. Those are the frame fields we looked at previously. When I move into wireless, there's a few extra fields added because of... <clears throat> these acknowledgements um, and the associations and, and uh, et cetera that we have. So first off, we want to recognize that there is overhead because of these extra header fields in here, as opposed to regular, uh, regular wired Ethernet. The additional address fields are because of our access points and things additional in our network that we did not have before. You know, before we would just have my MAC address to your MAC address. Well, now we have intermediate step of the access point in there, etc. So we have additional address fields as well as sequence control fields to get the data through this wireless network. So we have these additional fields, and this is a kind of a breakdown of the frame control field. This is a um, <clears throat> this is a for our as we see back here the type of frame that we are we are sending the additional address fields are for like the access point and so forth and in the sequence control field how large is this packet that we're going to fragment so there's there's a quick breakdown of those additional fields but the piece to remember is just there is additional overhead because of these extra header fields that we did not have with wireless networks So our design of a network, determining our design of a network, has a couple factors in. Uh, the devices being used, the technologies we're implementing, the number of users, the number of devices that need supported are all going to factor the design of our wireless network. So the first one we start with is your smaller home office. Uh, this is typically what we have in our house, um, what we might even have in places, small places like um, maybe you know like a church office or something like that where you just have a few devices that need to be connected so one access point might actually have everything included in it uh, like you have at home the access is the gateway to connect to the isp has a wireless in to connect the, the wireless users um, actually has routing and switching functions built into it so this one device kind of has it all and we typically have this type of connection my internet connection coming into some type of modem <coughs> cable, Fios, that kind of thing, um, and then connect it into our single device that acts as kind of the, the central connection point for everything in our house. I might have a desktop wired into it, and I might have other devices wirelessly connected to it. That's your smaller home office, and I typically have this device that has a couple switch ports in, my internet port connects out to the ISP, um, the routing function there is going to route the traffic from here over to my miniature switch that's here and then i typically have an access point wired into it as well that's why early on i called this you know what you have at home is kind of like a little network in a box and that's exactly what this is it's a small network in a box handling all of your connection well with this we typically have a lot of internet of thing devices internet of things devices uh, especially in homes we might have a lot of things connected into our network so Refreshing what we said before, we might have some smart devices, smart thermostats, smart um, you know connectors on our light bulbs and switches. I might have some smart speakers. I might have some cameras. I might have some doorbells. All things that will be connected into my network. All these types of things. So, so the book actually just kind of uh, 
gave a couple details on some of these. I might have personal monitoring devices, GPS trackers, smartwatches, that sort of things that might be connected into our network. I might have smart speakers, whether it be Echo, HomePod, Google Home, etc., um, connected into my network as well. I might have smart thermostats connected in my home. I think this is like the Nest thermostat, and this is one from Honeywell. Um, these might be connected into my network as well, <coughs> monitoring my heating and air conditioning and making adjustments to it based on uh, based on activity in the house, time of day, etc. I might have smart doorbells, ring, etc., that I might have connected up um, that would answer, you know, basically answer somebody at my house and maybe even record the video and allow us to communicate with that person um, if we're not home. I might have security cameras connected up. Again, these might be uh, there to just provide uh, video feed if motion is uh, as detected, might even have some night vision capability, might have two-way audio um, on this capability as well. This might be connected to my network. I might have smart refrigerators or other smart appliances connected into my network as well. These would all be things that need to communicate or connect to this. I'll zoom back here real quick. This homeowner um router that's going to be kind of this central connection point for everything in my house. I might have all these devices in my in my network connecting and needing to communicate. So this uh, this device, your small or home office device, router slash access point connection, I have some considerations. Uh, I need to think about distance to the devices I'm connecting to and my wireless standard, uh, any obstacles that might be in the way of uh, where this access point is located. Um, best coverage spot. Once upon a time, I had mine in like kind of the one corner of my house. Um, I rewired and moved it to a more central location where most of us are connecting. Um, it's actually under my two daughters' bedrooms, and it's in the living room where all of us tend to have things like laptops, smart uh, smartphones, etc. Um, so making sure my, my coverage area is, is good. Watching out for sources of interference. This might be neighbors. This might be other uh, devices in your house. Once upon a time, uh, we had things like dryers and washing machines that would actually interfere with the wireless signal. Uh, so we've moved things around as well to try to minimize that. Uh, so these would all be considerations. As I move into a corporate network, because again, this is all just kind of on the small or home office network. As we move into a corporate network, um, I need a little bit more systematic approach, not just kind of thinking about what I'm connecting, but a little bit more about what needs to be connected and how am I going to do that. So I might actually need to do what's called a site survey. The site survey is going to look at what you know what kind of things are going to connect, uh, what kind of facilities are, are that I'm connecting in the coverage area of, and that's going to help me locate, well, where do I need my access points? Where might I need more than one because of, of volume of things connecting or uh, obstacles that might minimize the coverage area? So I do a couple things. I look at the blueprints of the building, look at obstacles, you know, areas that need to be covered, uh, kind of think about wireless demand. You know, if I'm thinking about a school uh, and I want wireless in a cafeteria, well, at certain times of the day, that's going to get saturated with wireless devices. Um, if I'm looking at a, a uh, you know, facility like a basketball court or a stadium where I do actually want uh, wireless, again, I might have points of time where it's saturated. So I need to think about what is going to be where and what do I need to support. Will I need any access points to act as bridges connecting two parts of my network? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, once upon a time, Hack had multiple buildings in the Harrisburg area that it was using for classes. Um, it has the main Harrisburg campus and it has the Midtown 1 building, but it used to have the Midtown 2. Uh, I believe they were actually using a wireless bridge to connect uh, the main Hack campus to the Midtown 2 building. Um, it's relatively close. We would just need to think about the distance and lining up our access points to communicate with them. So that kind of wireless bridge, would that be part of my network? Would I need to do that to connect parts of my uh, my network? And here I give you a couple examples of some antennas that could be used to do so uh, and kind of a way to do so. I can actually, in some of my access points, add an external antenna and then over to another site, just kind of do the reverse to connect those two sites together. 
I would need to think about, will I need multiple access points? Will I need, uh, will I need multiple access points to cover a floor? Will I need to cover multiple floors with multiple access points? Or can I get by with just putting on the ceiling of the first floor, and that now covers the first and second floor for usage? Uh, signal strength. How much signal do I need? Um, if I, a lot of access points, I can adjust the signal strength, which basically increases or decreases my, my coverage area. If I put an access point kind of in the center of the building and kind of increase the uh, the power, if you will, the signal coverage, the signal power, the strength, I might be able to cover my whole building with just that access point. If I move it to the side of my building, well, I might cover maybe an area with high concentration, but I might also be spilling my signal out to the street or neighboring buildings where I don't want that signal to be. So I need to think about my signal strength, uh, where the access points could be and how, how strong the signal is, because that increases kind of like the radius, the coverage area. Um, I, I might actually start testing where my access points are going to be located using a dummy AP. Uh, we even did this in our church many years ago. We just, we hooked up a little wireless router, if you will, uh, and tried it in a couple spots to see, well, what kind of area coverage can we get with this? And that kind of helped us. We moved them around in a couple different spots. I'm like, I, I think this will work well to cover what we need. And then, then we kind of mounted them up in the ceiling above where people could see. But I might actually do that. I might actually buy one access point of what we're going to use and start putting in spots to see what kind of coverage area we can get. Um, I do want to test my wireless from the farthest corners, a corner of a building, corner of a lunchroom, that sort of thing. Do I have enough signal? Um, I need to consider obstacles, walls, um, ceilings, floors that might affect my signal, um, thick concrete walls, that sort of stuff. And I also want to consider how my wireless and wired is going to integrate. Um, when I add, add wireless to my network, I probably need to uh, segment that off with like virtual network, uh, uh, VLANs, virtual networks, subnets, that sort of thing to keep those devices separate from the wired network um, so their traffic really does not ming mingle. There's tools out there to help you with the site survey. Uh, different manufacturers have different utilities to do so that you can buy. Um, and it's all designed to finding finding out what is out there. Is there any interference out there? What kind of signal strengths am I getting um, in my building? And a lot of them will help you build what's called a heat map to help you locate dead zones. A heat map, very quickly you can see what kind of saturation coverage am I getting from my access points. Um, is that what I need? Do I need to move them around and do I have any areas where I might have cover uh, areas where I don't have coverage called a dead zone and and sometimes that's not an issue sometimes that is sometimes it's like well there's nobody nothing wireless over there so we don't need to worry about it but there's times I might be like mm, I need to adjust my access points to cover that area um, and that's what that can help you with. So after that's done and I need to implement, I, I think about all my access points belonging to the Steam Extended Service Set. Um, and that allows all of these scattered across my building, across my floors, to act like just one giant wireless network for the users in it. Um, so the users just see one, <coughs> one SSID that they're connecting to and it can roam around as we talked about before. Uh, and that's kind of what my enterprise or corporate level wireless network would start looking like.